if this video makes you want to upgrade, raise some cash by selling your old gear to KEH. Use this link to get an online quote in minutes and use this code to get an extra 5% bonus. When you're ready to buy gear, whether it's a mirrorless camera or vintage lenses, KEH has great prices on used gear with a 180 day warranty. Use the link in this code to get an extra 5% off. Thanks for sponsoring this video, KEH. Chelsea, you love your GA50. You yes. say it's the best DSLR ever made. I love it, it's my favorite. But Nikon has finally made a mirrorless GA50, the Z7 Mark II. So you can finally join the 21st century. So what about it makes it a mirrorless D850? Okay, first of all, we finally have two card slots, just like yeah. you got. Yeah, but I've had this for, okay, I'll give it to you. You don't even remember how old that camera is, do you? How, what was that thing released? I think 2017, yeah. It's got two processors now. They've doubled the processing power, so the autofocus systems are all much, much better. It's got eye detect autofocus, which the first Z7 didn't have. Okay. And it's the same price. You get so much more for $3,000. Well, being the same price does not mean it's the same caliber of camera. Like these have professional controls. Things are lighted when you want them to. She thick, so she feels good in the hand. No, that's not, being fat isn't good. Like this is so much easier if not you're gonna fat. be walking around. Thick. Thick. And look at my control panel. Like, look at that beautiful little OLED. What do you got there, Miss 1970s Casio watch? 1970s, okay. What, you got the Iron Man watch on your camera over there? <laughs> this works perfectly well, and it's lit from behind. I mean, it, yours isn't that much greater. That looks like it's from the 90s. Look at these quality dials versus yours. Yours looks like it should be on a disposable camera. On the D850, changing the shutter mode is a dedicated analog dial that you can adjust when the camera is off. Changing the mode and white balance have dedicated buttons that you can hold with your left hand while your right hand adjusts the settings. On the Z7, you're limited to two small custom function buttons awkwardly placed on the front of the camera where I can't easily reach them while shooting. Okay, well I think that all of these talking points and specs are well and good, but we need to take these out into the real world and shoot and see if this is actually ready to compete with the D850 because I do think this is the greatest DSLR of all time. Okay, let's load up. Let's do it. It's the end of the first quarter, and my D850 is ahead, four to one. This seems like an easy win for me, but Tony is eerily confident. So big point for me for travel scenarios like this because my body is mirrorless. It's so much smaller. And another big point because my mount is bigger and that means that I can use like wide angle lenses that are just more efficiently designed. Check out the crazy size difference for a stabilized 24 to 70 f2.8 setup. Well, I truly have not had a problem with the size of wide angle lenses, but I have had a problem with mirrorless cameras having less efficient batteries. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna get a point for battery life. Oh, another thing, I can still use all those F mount lenses. I just have to throw on a hundred dollar adapter. Uh, not so fast. That adapter only auto focuses with AFS lenses. My D850 also auto focuses hundreds of vintage F mount lenses without focusing motors. So, pfft. That actually saves me money because I can buy used lenses from KEH that work with my D850 and have a 180 day warranty. Save an additional 5% with this coupon. And Nikon finally has the holy trinity of F2.8 zooms available. So they haven't replaced all their DSLR lenses, but they do have the most important ones for mirrorless. And those Z mount lenses are better than the old F mount lenses, partly because they take advantage of the wider, shallower lens mount. Check out this clip from our 2019 comparison of the Z mount 24 70 F2.8 to the F mount equivalent. The Z lens is smaller, lighter, contrastier, sharper, and a third of a stop brighter in T-stops. 
I don't like what you're saying. Point, 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 point. <laughs> let's see how those features actually work in practice. So okay. let's shoot around here like we're on a little vacation, even though we're only like a town over and uh, see which one performs better. Let's do it. Once we got off the couch and into the real world, my mirrorless Z7 II easily gained on her. It ain't over till it's over, folks. You know, one of the advantages of this should be the sophisticated focusing system because it can focus anywhere in the frame. Yeah. But when you have the all autofocus points mode on, it just focuses on whatever is closest to you. So I'm trying to take a picture of this like gorgeous building, but there's a tree branch in the corner of the frame and that's what it chooses to focus on. And I can't move the thumbstick to change points. I either have to completely change the focusing mode or I have to use the back of the screen and then touch it. And that works okay with a wide angle lens, but you know, I'd like to be able to use the viewfinder and it just, it's difficult to switch between focusing modes. I'm not having problems. With the D850, I can program different back buttons to either all AF points or a single AF point. Oddly, you can't do that with the Z7. So changing focusing modes requires multiple button presses. Tony, I'm not having the same problem as you. It will focus where I want it to, but actually the live view focusing, I forgot about this, is really horrible. Do you see how it takes a while to snap onto anything? With the DSLR, it's like two different cameras. You have this great camera when you're using the viewfinder and then you have a terrible camera when you're in live view because they haven't updated it. And with me, I have a single system, whether I'm using the viewfinder or the rear screen and both work flawlessly. It works fine when I'm looking through the viewfinder, but live view is not great. I have to admit, Tony's right about that. Tony's red, Tony's red, Tony's red, Tony's red. I was just changing my aperture and I wondered why it wasn't looking any different through the viewfinder and it's because I, I don't have EVF. That's right, with mirrorless cameras, <laughs> what you see is what you get. <laughs> Point for me, if I shoot at FA, I see the depth of field, I don't have to chimp. I don't have, because every time I take a shot, I already know exactly what the results are gonna be. Oh yeah, shoot and review, shoot and review, just like a DSLR user. Enjoy 1992. <laughs> We're tied up now, but neither of us will be happy unless this is a solid win. Oh, live view is terrible. Oh, see, as a short person, you need to be able to use that live view, right? You know what? Go like this. Oh, this is what it's like when your photographer uses a DSLR. You have to crouch like this. <laughs> That's so rude. Here's another point for me. The D850's tilt screen flips down 90 degrees to make overhead shooting easier. The Z7 flips 45 degrees. Wah. I guess that's okay. Okay, wait, I'm gonna put my adapter on and you can put your portrait, portrait lens on this mirrorless body and see what life is like in the future, Chels. I don't want to. Remember with Nikon, it's lefty tidy, righty loosey. Easy to remember. <laughs> and you can focus in the corners of the frame if you want to. You're not limited by the limited autofocus selection. That's true. Here's a viewfinder recording I made a different day. Look how eye detect works corner to corner. On the D850, the focusing points don't go as far out, so you'd have to crop and post or use imprecise and slow focus recompose techniques. It seems to be working well. And actually, I'm composing the photo better. Because you're not limited by the limited number of focusing points? Yeah. How does it compare to the original Z7? It's eye detect autofocus. It's working way better than the original Z7. So what do you think? If you're a portrait photographer, would you be able to upgrade from the D850 and be happy with this? Yes, I would. But I think that the true test is going to be sports and wildlife. See if they could keep up. Hmm. We don't have to do that test. He's not, he's not seeming very confident, so I'm, I'm eager to do that test. Tony has come from behind with just nine minutes on the cock. <laughs> Should I say you've come from behind? <laughs> What's another term? Tony is gaining on me with just nine minutes left on the clock, but I have a trick up my sleeve. So I wanted some photos of these cute ducks, uh, but when they heard my shutter, a lot of them turned away from me. Is that a problem for you, Tony? My shutter is a lot quieter, but I also have a totally silent shutter. 
that doesn't make any sound. That's what silent means. But silent shooting is only good for still or slow moving subjects. When I tried to use it while panning to track a flying bird, the rolling shutter effect was absolutely awful. Yeah, so if you wanna be discreet, street photography, press photography, events, weddings, mirrorless is definitely the way to go. Though okay. that one just looked up at me because I was making noise, so that might be cute. That's not an advantage, Chelsea. While we're here, maybe I'll just grab a little video clip of the ducks because they're cute. You know, I'll just put this in video mode and uh, start recording and Wow, the autofocus tracking on this just works absolutely perfectly. How's, how's the autofocus tracking working on your camera, Chelsea? Um, let me try. Oh, you can't see it through the viewfinder, can you? No, because your, your camera has an optical viewfinder, so you cannot record video with the viewfinder at all. And the screen gets all washed out in the sun, so with mirrorless cameras, I can use the viewfinder and block out the sun and really see clearly what I'm framing up. Yeah, actually, even when I have the focusing point directly on the bird, it's losing focus and then hunting and finding it again. Not only that, but I have 4K at 60 frames per second with just a little bit of a crop. I can output raw video if I use an external recorder, all stuff you can't do. And with the original Z7, I found the video autofocus to be like not good enough. I wouldn't recommend it. But this, I'm just gonna say it's good enough. It does not have a flip screen though. Like for some reason, they still just gave me a tilting screen. So if you wanna film yourself or you might ever uh, be trying to film from the side or filming overhead shots, like it can't flip straight down either. It's still a little limiting and you might be looking at a non Nikon camera for that stuff. Still way better than a D850. Okay. Maybe we should get to the sports and wildlife. I wanna do stabilization first. Really eager to get to that sports and wildlife. <laughs> I got this Peter McKinnon ND filter. Gonna let me get some long shots. Pull the cap off. Bam, beautiful. <laughs> this ND filter is so dense that I'm at a one second exposure, but I can still see the screen, which I couldn't on a DSLR because it just brightens everything up. In a DSLR, the viewfinder would just be black. Okay, let's see how slow I can go. Buy a Z7 II and you can just leave your tripod at home. I got sharp one second handheld exposures with an unstabilized lens. That stabilization also works with any lens, even old F-mount adapted lenses, manual lenses, whatever, because it's sensor stabilization. Also makes the video way stable if you're handheld too. And none of the Nikon DSLRs have that. Um, it is true, I don't have in-body image stabilization, but if I have a stabilized lens, that it wouldn't even matter. I, I don't think this one is stabilized though. No. So. Tough luck. It does matter. <laughs> okay, you won that one. Uh, that, that quarter didn't go great for me, but sports and wildlife is next. There we go. All right, finally my wildlife test. We're gonna head down to the water. Hopefully there are some animals to take photos of, and I've got this huge 600 millimeter F4. And uh, I think you're gonna be surprised when I put that on here. It's better. I don't think so. This little body doesn't balance this big old lens very well, but Nikon finally made a vertical grip for this, so you can get that. This advertises animal IAF, and sometimes it works with cats and dogs if they have dark eyes and light fur, but it doesn't ever work with wildlife that I've found. And in fact, you pretty much have to use a single autofocus point if you wanna be able to uh, select a subject among a crowded background or if there are branches in the foreground. So the autofocus system basically reverts to old style DSLR where you're using the thumbstick to move the focusing point around. All right, so I know that you're making fun of my DSLR like it's outdated technology, but this is a really great wildlife camera and I've been using it up until I switched to the R5. It has 3D tracking, so the tracking is really excellent and also with the vertical grip, you get 9 to 10 frames per second. 
And that's not bad because a lot of cameras boast that they get a high frame rate and they really don't when we go out and start shooting. Yeah, so that's what I found with this shooting action. In high mode, I get four to five real world frames per second, tracking autofocus. And then I can put it in high plus mode, but then I don't get a real time view through the viewfinder, which means I can't track moving subjects. And there's so much viewfinder lag that if I'm shooting even a flying seagull, then the most I can get is about three frames and then I lose track of it because while you're shooting, the lag is crazy. So if I were shooting wildlife, sports, or any kind of action, there's no way I can currently recommend the Z7 Mark II. I would definitely tell people, stick with your DSLR for sports and action, just way better. Yeah, and that's not the only mirrorless camera that has that problem. That is the reason I did not switch to mirrorless for wildlife until this year when I switched from this D850 for wildlife to the Canon R5. And it's because that, that blackout that you get, it, it messes up your tracking. You know, you'll get a shot where you finally get a bird to dive and hit the water to be fishing, and you miss the shot because you can't see what's going on and, you, and you're uh, losing your subject in the frame. So that is actually really important in practice. You talked about 3D tracking, and it works great on the D850. You can have a single autofocus point, you put it on your subject, and then wherever it moves, it continues to track it. That's so important for shooting sports where you want to shoot a particular player. Maybe it's your kid, maybe it's your favorite athlete, not the defenders that are surrounding them. This does not have any kind of tracking like that. If you put it in all autofocus points, it will pick the subject for you and then track it as it moves around the frame, but you can't select a specific subject at all. Yeah. And if you do wanna use tracking, you have to take your eye away from the viewfinder and then touch the rear screen to select a subject. And then it does a good job tracking it, but you can't be shooting telephoto with the rear screen, it's just too hard. Like, you really need to be using the EVF. They could fix this with a software update, but we've been complaining about this for a couple of years and they haven't done it yet. Complain harder. Okay, I think we're ready to tally up the score and uh, declare a winner. I won, but mostly because of the video features. I won. If you're a stills only shooter, <laughs> the D850 might be the better choice. The DSLR, definitely better for sports in action. Yeah. For travel photography portraits, they both work well. But this is smaller and the eye detect makes portraits work a little bit better. That's true. I don't think this will keep you from getting great photos when you're traveling, but that will is a little bit lighter. But this doesn't feel nearly as good in the hands. No way. This has better grip, better buttons and dials, lighted buttons, like it's a proper pro body, whereas this still feels like kind of a lightweight consumer body. But if you're shooting any kind of video, and you're not gonna be in front of the camera, you're behind the camera, yeah. this is superior in every way to the D850. I'll give you that, it's way better at video, and the live view on this is appalling. Nikon has come a long way. So if you are considering upgrading to mirrorless, now might finally be the time. You can also win a free Z7 Mark II. We'll literally buy it for you and give it to you at oh, windowscamera.com, yeah. or you can have a Sony a7R4 or a Canon R5. A uh, final thank you to our sponsor, KEH, for making this possible. Sell your old cameras, lenses, tripods, and more to KEH at this link and use this code to get an extra 5%. You can also save money by buying from KEH at this link and getting a 180-day warranty. This code will give you a 5% discount. Thanks for sponsoring this video, KEH. Did you say subscribe? Subscribe. <laughs> give us a like and subscribe. Bye, guys. <laughs>